So in this lecture, we're going to talk about the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative bacterial cell walls. And we're going to compare them in the molecules that they're made of, as well as their overall kind of bigger picture structure. And so we're going to start by talking about a gram-positive cell wall. And a gram-positive cell wall is a one-layered structure. And so here in this picture, you can see the plasma membrane of a bacterial cell in pink. And then outside or external to that plasma membrane, you can see the gram-positive cell wall. And what you notice is there's just one layer here. There's one single very thick layer of the peptidoglycan. And we talked in the previous lecture about that peptoglycan structure and how it's made. In the gram-positive bacteria, there are many, many strands of peptidoglycan all held together to make this one very thick layer. And you can actually see it here in the microscope image as well. The plasma membrane is highlighted in pink, and then that thick single layer of peptidoglycan is seen outside of it in the gram-positive bacteria. And so alternatively, there are gram-negative bacteria whose cell walls are not made of just one layer, but rather two layers. And a gram-negative bacteria has their plasma membrane, which you can see in pink, and then they have a very thin, skinny layer of peptidoglycan here, just external to the plasma membrane. And then they have an additional outer membrane, which is external to that peptidoglycan. So going from the inside out, you've got plasma membrane and then a two-layered cell wall. That first layer is a thin peptidoglycan layer. And then the second is a thicker outer membrane, almost like a second plasma membrane. And you can see that in the microscope image here as well. There's your plasma membrane in pink, a very thin layer of peptidoglycan, and then your outer membrane. And so when you're comparing these two structures, bacteria that are considered gram-positive. These species will have a cell wall that's only one layer, and it's a thick peptidoglycan layer. And any bacterial species that are considered gram-negative species will have a two-layered cell wall, where there's a thin layer of peptidoglycan and an outer membrane. And so kind of if we looked at these as a cross-section, right, if we just took a slice of the cell walls of a gram-positive bacterial species and a gram-negative one, it would look a little bit more complicated like these structures you can see down here. So here's the gram-positive bacteria on the left. Those are the bacteria that have a single layer cell wall, and that's that thick layer of peptidoglycan. So here's the plasma membrane in green, kind of teal, and then outside you can see that thick purple layer, that's that peptidoglycan, and it's a single layer outside of the cell wall. And what you can see is that it makes kind of a pretty thick mesh. And there are a couple of other molecules incorporated into that peptidoglycan as well. And we'll talk about those on the next slide. For the gram-negative bacterial species, you can see the plasma membrane here, those teal phospholipids. Here's the peptidoglycan, just external to the plasma membrane, one thin layer. And then the second layer of a gram-negative cell wall is the outer membrane, which you can see here. And in the outer membrane, you can see a series of different proteins and molecules, which I'll also talk about on the next slides. So your gram-positive bacteria, right, has that one thick peptidoglycan layer. Gram-negative has two layers, thin peptidoglycan, and then outer membrane. And so if we focus just on a gram-positive bacteria that has a single-layered cell wall, <clears throat> there are a couple of other molecules that help maintain the structure of that single kind of cell wall um, and keep it attached to the bacterial cell, as well as provide some other functions. So here's a cross-section of a gram-positive cell wall, and you can see the plasma membrane on the bottom. There's the thick layer of peptidoglycan in kind of like orange and yellow. And what you'll see is there are some 
small purple molecules called tachoic acids and other longer purple molecules called lipotachoic acid. And they both have a slightly different function. Tachoic acids are linked to the peptidoglycan and they extend outward into the environment. And they actually give the cell wall an overall kind of negative charge. Lipotachoic acids, on the other hand, hold the peptidoglycan onto the cell membrane. And so you can see that connection between the cell wall and the cell membrane here, that's maintained by lipotachoic acid. So the cell wall is not just kind of floating out there, it's physically attached to um, the bacteria's membrane. Additionally, there are some exoenzymes, which you can see here. They're in what's called the periplasmic space. And the periplasmic space is just the space that exists between the membrane and the cell wall. So there's always going to be a little bit of area or empty space between the plasma membrane and the cell wall. Exoenzymes exist here, and their job is to usually digest big polymers like sugars to be transported across the plasma membrane. Okay, and so a little bit different in gram-negative bacteria, we still have the layer of peptidoglycan here. You can see it in orange and yellow, but now we have this additional outer membrane on the outside because remember the gram-negative cell walls have two layer structure. And so inside of their cell walls, they have some proteins called bronze lipoprotein that hold the outer membrane onto the peptidoglycan establish a physical connection between these two layers. You can see the bronze lipoproteins here in blue, holding the thin layer of peptidoglycan onto the outer membrane. And then there are some important molecules called porins on the outside of the outer membrane. Porins are basically pores or holes. They act as channels in the outer membrane and they allow stuff to pass through from the outside environment through the porin and then ultimately, hopefully, be able to get into the bacterial cell. And finally, there's a molecule called lipopolysaccharides, or LPSs, and those LPSs are another major molecule in a gram-negative cell wall. And so if you look back at this slide here, you can actually see all these gray little hairs, or what looks like hairs, coming out of the outer membrane. And those gray structures are the lipopolysaccharides or the LPSs. And you can see that same kind of structure here. It's the outer membrane and then a long projection coming out into the environment. And lipopolysaccharides are what give gram-negative bacteria an overall negative charge. In the same way that tachoic acid does it for the gram-positive bacteria. Some other things that lipopolysaccharides can do, they can actually help us distinguish between different types or strains of bacteria. Each bacteria will have a different group of sugars, particularly out here at the very end portion of the lipopolysaccharide called the O antigen, the very, very external part. Um, those different sugars serve as almost like a barcode to identify different types of bacteria. The core part, and these set of sugars here that you can see in yellow, that actually helps stabilize the outer membrane of a gram-negative bacteria, keep it structured. And then lipid A, which is the phospholipid portion of lipopolysaccharide, is actually embedded in the outer membrane. And it acts as a toxin. Um, and it can only really do that when the integrity of this outer membrane is destroyed. And as the membrane gets destroyed, the, all these lipids that are nice and organized now get released. And then lipid A can act as a toxin after the bacteria has been destroyed, potentially by antibiotics.